This video is sponsored by King's Comics. Get 10% off at kingscomics.com. Junji Ito's hypnotic obsession drove the creation of a horror masterpiece. He let the concept of the spiral consume him. He began by spending hours staring into its depths, to read all the reference material he could find, to create vortexes in his bath, consume spiral-shaped food, and even to raise snails. The result is an incredible horror manga. Like reading a mind map of Ito's research, each chapter acts as a short story exploring a different facet of the shape, while the curse of the spiral consumes a small seaside town. These disparate chapters twist together into one cohesive cosmic horror masterpiece. Uzumaki takes full advantage of what is unique to the manga medium itself. From the monochrome aesthetic to the repetitious act of turning the page, Uzumaki draws the reader in, just as the spiral shape draws the eye to its center. The curse of the spiral passes from Junji Ito to the characters within, to us. Welcome to Gateway to Anime. With an upcoming anime adaptation of Junji Ito's horror masterpiece Uzumaki, we're diving into the vortex and exploring what makes this manga so unique. For those same reasons, this may be a very difficult work to adapt to anime. While the trailers look promising and Junji Ito himself has shown support for the project, if we've learnt anything from his manga, it's not to hold on to hope. Uzumaki is a doomed horror tale told as an incredible manga, and if the anime adaptation does work, this could be a classic in the making. But for reasons we'll discuss later in the video, Junji Ito's original work may remain the best way to experience Uzumaki. He truly harnesses the medium of manga to its fullest potential. So if you want to read it for yourself, you can get a discounted copy of the Uzumaki manga from this video's sponsor. King's Comic is an award-winning comic retailer in the heart of Sydney. Their manga section in-store has expanded to become three times larger, offering a huge selection to browse through. They have a whole host of Junji Ito's work, including the special edition of Uzumaki, combining all three volumes into one hardback book. They keep their shelves fully stocked with the hottest new manga titles and the freshest new volumes of all your favorite series. They've also got an extensive back catalogue of discounted manga, some of which is discontinued and out of print, so you might find some rare titles that you can't get anywhere else. Beyond manga, King's Comic stocks are a huge range of comics, collectibles, and pop culture goodies. And if you can't make it into their store, their website is fully stocked and ships internationally. Thanks to King's Comics, you can get 10% off an online order using the discount code Gateway to Anime. Thanks so much to King's Comics for sponsoring this video and supporting our channel. Head into the store to get a hands-on experience with the incredible Uzumaki manga. Uzumaki follows a young girl named Kitty as strange events begin to occur in her small seaside hometown. On her walk to school, she encounters her boyfriend's father, crouched in an alley and transfixed by an empty snail shell. She tries to speak with him, but he either will not or cannot respond. She later asks her boyfriend, Shuichi, about his father's odd behavior, to which he confirms that he's been strange lately, then immediately asks her to leave town with him. He insists that they'll be driven to madness if they stay, as the town is infected with spirals. We learn that his father has been obsessing over spirals, much like Junji Ito himself, even making whirlpools in his bath, just like the author. Despite Shuichi's warning, the two remain in the small town till supernatural horrors slowly engulf them. Junji Ito's initial desire was to create a story about strange changes that would occur for people living in an unusually long nagaya or longhouse, a traditional Japanese row house from the Edo period. This was based on his personal experience living in such a house as a child. In order to draw the longhouse, Ito was inspired by a mosquito coil to imagine the structure bent into a spiral. This concept was the genesis for the entire story, 
spurring Ito to obsess over the shape and its metaphorical significance. He describes it as a mysterious pattern with secrets to unlock that can represent infinity. Uzumaki translates to vortex or whirlpool. Separated into individual characters, the title cleverly carries an additional meaning, with uzu meaning swirl and maki meaning both coil and the volume of a book. The title itself indicates that this book is a vortex. Interpreting the shape as a mysterious force of mental manipulation isn't unique to Junji Ito. It has long been associated with hypnosis, and William Butler Yeats even basing a unifying theory around it. His concept of gyres outlines how everything begins as a single point, then gradually spirals out into entropy. Something will start at a place of perfect order, then spiral into chaos. He expands on this idea that the inverse is also constantly happening. While one thing may begin and gradually spiral into entropy, another will simultaneously be coalescing from entropy into a single point of perfect order, something new being born into existence. Through this theory of gyres, each spiral metaphor in Uzumaki can be interpreted as the unwinding of one thing and the birth of another. While the perfect order of the town is established in the first chapter, it unwinds into chaos over the course of the manga. At the same time, seemingly chaotic and unrelated horror elements from each chapter begin to coalesce into one climactic ending. Junji Ito himself says that he is still unsure of the spiral's meaning. Rather than that being a shortcoming from the author, it is one of Uzumaki's greatest strengths. The spiral itself is an infinite shape, lending itself to the Lovecraftian storytelling that Ito took as inspiration. The works of H.P. Lovecraft are known for cataloguing a descent into madness as characters are lured in by ancient eldritch horrors beyond human comprehension. Junji Ito's immersion into the conceptual meanings of the spiral was likely spurred on by this affinity for Lovecraft, willingly obsessing over the enigma of the shape. For this reason, assigning any specific meaning to the spiral would ruin the potency of the work. It's the act of interpretation that twists the reader's mind as they read the manga, cleverly infecting them with the spiral. The manipulation of the subconscious is achieved in a variety of other ways too beginning with the repetition of words alluding to the spiral like winding, spinning, and turning. This reader engagement is further reinforced by the hypnotic repetitions of turning the page, performing physical circular motions. Even eyes scanning across the panels creates dizzying repetition, as if watching the rotations of an object caught in a whirlwind. Just as a spiral is the twisting together of black and white, the balance of negative space and dark shading is employed in the artwork to achieve a sense of enclosure. Shuichi points out the looming black hills at the start of the first chapter, while there is more white negative space on the page. As the chapter continues, more heavily shaded panels encroach till black borders and dark shading dominates the page. This matches the rising intensity of the story. And with techniques like splitting one action over multiple panels, the reader increases their pace as the horror intensifies. Through all these clever techniques, Junji Ito's Uzumaki effectively transforms the experience of reading a manga into a hypnotic exercise. It draws the reader in, mentally and optically, drilling them into the story and infecting them with the curse of the spiral. Ito's illustrations also pay homage to classic art associated with emotional distress, such as Van Gogh's Starry Night or The Scream from Edvard Munch. The influence of horror manga legends like Kazo Umezu are also resonant in Uzumaki, such as drawing beautiful young girls in the art style of shoujo manga juxtaposed with horrific scenes to achieve greater shock. While Uzumaki is most recognizable for its distinctive art and spiral motif, much of its uncomfortable tone arises from the more mundane and grounded aspects of the story. The cosmic horror elements and shocking illustrations of body horror certainly seize attention, yet these elements are supplementary in crafting the terror. It's the personal distress of the characters and their complicated relationships that establish the unsettling atmosphere, with the foreboding threat of a curse looming in the background. When the curse does take over, it acts as punctuation to the emotional journeys of the characters and the themes of each chapter. 
Uzumaki can be interpreted as a story about coming of age and noticing the toxicity of a small hometown. Kitty doesn't notice anything wrong with the town as she's never left, while her boyfriend Shuichi feels a sense of dread whenever he returns on the train from attending school elsewhere. The same conversation has Kitty mentioning that he's been depressed lately, alluding to a troubled home life. Although on the surface Shuichi talks about a supernatural spiral curse, his dread can be attributed to his personal family struggles skewing his perspective of their town into a stifling and oppressive place. He perceives the scenic mountains and ocean as looming and gloomy, looking completely different from where he goes to school. In this sense, the spiral curse is purely metaphorical for his emotional state. The first two chapters explore the darker side of Shuichi's family, coming home to his parents in a dramatic fight that forces him to intervene. These early chapters touch on themes of addiction, paranoia, grief, and inherited trauma. His father's addiction to spirals could be allegorical for many real-world addictions and the way they affect real families. The dark imagery of the spiral curse can represent a multitude of confronting personal issues, and each chapter of Uzumaki makes use of this by shifting locations and characters within the small town. In later chapters, Kitty attends school, in which the spiral curse represents a range of puberty-related themes like excessive hair growth, bullying, attraction, and unwanted attention. As Kitty moves through each chapter's varied locations and experiences, it's as if she is beginning to notice the toxicity of her small hometown since Shuichi pointed it out. We as the reader experience that too, with the various social issues being so relatable to real life. Uzumaki maintains a grounded and unsettling tone purely based on the uncomfortable realities of daily life. The worst case scenario of each mundane setting always comes to pass. While this may be horrifying enough for some readers, the spiral curse then takes over with terrifying imagery, twisting that manifest paranoia into supernatural horror. In classic horror style, we then see the supernatural forces begin to dominate and tear the normality apart. This horror trope is brilliantly reframed as yet another spiral metaphor, with the mundane order of their small town being one arm and the dark cosmic horror being the other. While one recedes, the other increases as they twist together into one brilliantly told story. With such a fully realized manga work, the thought of an anime adaptation invites some skepticism. While anime is often adapted from manga, the horror genre has proved especially difficult to translate into motion. The shock of turning a page to reveal a grotesquely detailed illustration is hard to replicate. A single manga panel can sear itself into memory, whereas animated scenes can't demand the same lingering attention. Complex illustrations also need to be simplified to work as animation, which loses much of the distinct aesthetics that make darker manga so captivating. For this and many other reasons, previous attempts to adapt Junji Ito's work have fallen short. While the live-action Uzumaki begins like a faithful adaptation, it deviates drastically from the source material into a far less satisfying conclusion. Some of the practical elements work well, but the surreal and Lovecraftian moments of Uzumaki appear beyond the scope of the late 90s special effects or budget of this film, which is likely the reason the ending was changed. Worst of all, the horrifying moments of the manga often come across as silly and laughable, with lackluster performances and a slow pace, the relatable characters and rising tension of Uzumaki are noticeably absent. Although Tomi may be one of the better Junji Ito adaptations, receiving a total of eight sequels, the series has received a poor critical reception overall. Despite both Uzumaki and Tomi being released during the J-horror boom of the late 90s and early 2000s, they failed to ride that wave and were utterly eclipsed by terrifying films like Ringu. The existing anime adaptations have received similarly middling reviews. Gyo adapts one of his more comedy-focused stories into a film, yet adds unnecessary fan service and doesn't capture the tone of the source material. The Junji Ito collection and Junji Ito Maniac focuses on his shorter stories, which also feature comedy elements that aren't balanced with the same nuance as the source material. 
Deviations from the art style and story also let down these adaptations, which overall fail to capture the horror genius that Junji Ito's work is so renowned for. These failures contribute to a growing belief that adapting Junji Ito's manga simply can't be done. The task seems as futile and cursed as the town is in Uzumaki. Yet there are reasons that this new Uzumaki adaptation gives us hope. The art style showcase in the Uzumaki trailers looks as though it's leapt off the page and into motion. And while the surreal and Lovecraftian elements weren't achievable in live action, they certainly are in animation. Whereas previous anime adaptations focus on his work that features comedy, Uzumaki is one of his darker stories that can showcase his masterful horror. Despite the legacy of doomed adaptations, the upcoming Uzumaki anime appears to be a faithful adaptation with a strong production team behind it. Director Hiroshi Nagahama is known for the highly acclaimed and meditative anime series Mushishi. His work on Flowers of Evil also employed a distinctive rotoscoped animation style, giving a realistic sense of motion to help the anime feel grounded. A similar style is being used for Uzumaki, coupled with the monochrome color palette to honor the aesthetic of the manga. Junji Ito himself expressed appreciation for this decision and admiration for the director's previous work, throwing his support behind the project. This painstaking animation style has contributed to a lengthy production, with the anime first being announced way back in 2019. This includes delays because of COVID, although director Hiroshi Nagahama has posted videos assuring that the long production will be worth it. Our hope is that with this patience and attention to detail, the anime can faithfully render the complex and maddening world of this manga. The anime is co-produced between famous Japanese animation house Production IG and Adult Swim's in-house production company, Williams Street. While both of these producing studios have had an impressive resume of animation, Uzumaki is being animated by a lesser-known Tokyo-based studio named Drive. Their recent animation work gives us confidence, including To Your Eternity Season 2 and Konosuba, an explosion of this wonderful world. With the oversight of Production IG and William Street, the animation appears to be being handled with care. The soundtrack is being composed by Colin Stetson, famous for Hereditary and a variety of other recent horror films. As a saxophonist and multi-readist, his work has unique textural elements that could help to replicate the unnerving tone of Uzumaki. While it is comforting to know that Junji Ito supports a project and it's being overseen by a respected anime director and production team, there is still one element that is of concern. It has been announced that the entire Uzumaki manga will be adapted into just four episodes, with the manga consisting of multiple shorter stories and filling over 600 pages, we're a little concerned that four episodes isn't enough. One important thing to note is that the length of each episode hasn't been announced, so there is a chance that they might follow the recent trend of Pluto and Attack on Titan, releasing longer form episodes that span multiple chapters rather than the common anime episode length of roughly 20 minutes. Either way, there is a lot of complexity to Uzumaki that slowly weaves together, so it will require some clever writing to fit that into four episodes. Junji Ito has also read the screenplay and given it his support, praising the screenwriter for their talent in rearranging certain elements of the manga to suit the four episode structure. With such a faithful art style and the realistic motion of the animation, this upcoming adaptation has the visual aspects working well. Paired with Colin Stetson's haunting music and a talented director, we have high hopes that this anime will finally capture the magic of Junji Ito's work. Despite the many failed adaptations and the unknown fate of the new Uzumaki anime, Junji Ito's work remains some of the best horror manga available. Even if the new adaptation doesn't live up to our high expectations, hopefully it can help more people to discover the brilliant Uzumaki manga. If it succeeds, it may even pave the way for other dark manga to finally receive a faithful anime adaptation. Looking at you, Berserk. If you're watching this video after Uzumaki anime has come out, let us know what you think about it in the comments. And let us know which dark manga you'd most like to see an anime adaptation for. Thanks for watching and please like and subscribe to show your support. If you 
want early access to videos like these, we release them on Patreon before they make it to YouTube. Our Patreon supporters can even suggest topics for us to cover in the future. Thanks for watching.